Did you hear about the government's new immigration policy? No more visas for low-skilled workers. The government reveals its post-Brexit immigration plan, designed to attract what it calls the bright and the best. People who want to come here to work have to reach 70 points. You must have a job offer that gives you 20 points. At the right skill level, another 20. They'll have to earn £25,600 a year for 20 points. The applicant must be able to speak English. That's worth 10 points. You have to be able to speak English. <laughs> I'll say this now. That is half my family fucked. <laughs> I'm not joking. My uncle sounds like a coked-up Hagrid. <laughs> I can eat my baba, that upper baba is great lush. <laughs> speak English. Our leader can barely speak the language. <laughs> so, I'd be very, uh, in, you know, uh, on uh, Dragoon Dan being blah, 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 I, I look, I, I, I'm just saying... Me, me qui? <laughs> also, to get in, you need a job that isn't low-skilled and make over 25 grand. You're probably thinking that's one or two jobs. Oh, no. That could mean no more dental nurses, legal secretaries, ambulance staff, midwives, chefs, counsellors, gardeners, painters, receptionists, travel agents, physiotherapists, care assistants, waiters. So, pretty much every fucking job. <laughs> We've got our country back. I mean, sure, my teeth have fallen out and I've been waiting for a waiter for four days, but... <laughs> oh, Britannia! <laughs> Look, what I don't... What I don't understand, why is the government calling these jobs low-skilled? It's so insulting. I mean, listen to this carer. It's not fair for we to be working so hard, love what we do, passionately care for our clients and having the government bashing us that we're low-skill worker and, and speaking as if we're not exist and it's not fair and knowing that we're not working for a lot of money we're underpaid but we're getting on with our job as a moral duty damn right <laughs> to be a carer you need compassion patience kindness could you wash and feed an 88-year-old man with dementia? Could you provide 24-hour care for a disabled person? Could you hold the hand of a dying woman? That's skill. Our Prime Minister can't even use a fucking mop. <laughs> <laughs> MPs. MPs get paid 80 grand a year, and they're about as useful as this gate. <laughs> They're as effective as me in a staring contest. <laughs> they fucked up more times than Meghan Markle's dad. <laughs> and, and notoriously... <laughs> silly Billy. It's true. 53 million was spunked on Boris Johnson's garden bridge that was never built. Chris Grayling offered a £14 million contract to a ferry company that didn't have any ferries. <laughs> I mean, Jeremy Hunt can't even use a bell. Can we get a Yeah, sure. If we reduce immigration, there's going to be millions of jobs to fill. Don't worry, though. Our Home Secretary, Priti Patel, has the answer. There are 8.45 million British people in the United Kingdom that are economically inactive. Which is genius, until you realise that of the 8.45 million, 27% are students, 26% are long-term sick, 22% are carers, and 13% are fucking retired. <laughs> I know you're 75, Deirdre, but the roof needs retiling. <laughs> Quick, Edith, a criminal. I'm on it. We need immigrants. Not only do they work their bollocks off, but EU migrant workers contribute £2,300 more per year to UK than average British citizen. 
And think of the way they enrich our culture, food, music, literature, sport. If we got rid of foreign workers, the Premier League would just be three blokes and a pie. <laughs> this country is rooted in embracing other cultures. Royal family, German. <laughs> Democracy, Greek. Tea, Chinese. <laughs> St George, Turkish. <laughs> the people who control our elections, Russian. <laughs> <laughs> If we remove foreign culture, what have we got left? One chinless weirdo mumbling in a suit. <laughs> this prick. <laughs> a points-based system. How much you earn or how you speak or what you do doesn't make you British. Do you know what it does? Cheering when someone drops a glass in a pub. <laughs> Bitching about the weather. Getting a shit haircut at the barbers and going, yeah, no, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Celebrating heroes like this. Grand forgot glasses and ended up buying big box of condoms instead of tea. <laughs> laughing. <laughs> laughing at stories like this. Police were called out over fears there was a gorilla on the loose in Barrow. Turns out it was this guy. <laughs> That's what makes us British, taking the piss. I mean, look at this. A young carpenter from Whitby says he's been inundated with online messages telling him to go away because he happens to be called Storm Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> There's a bloke who's actually called Storm Dennis <laughs> and people have been tweeting him messages like this. <laughs> Fuck off and stop knocking my bins over. <laughs> that is what makes you British! <laughs> So why are we in this petrol predicament? Well, the Transport Minister, Grant Shapps, has blamed everyone. He blamed Covid, he blamed the public, and he blamed the Road Haulage Association, which is all misdirection. The reason we're in this mess, we don't have enough lorry drivers to deliver the petrol. And a major reason for that that nobody in the government is mentioning is Brexit. In the aftermath of Brexit, thousands of foreign drivers left the UK since they could no longer work visa-free. And now ordinary Britons are feeling the effects of that. It's almost like immigration was keeping the country afloat. <laughs> Bloody foreigners not coming here and not taking our jobs. <laughs> I mean, Christ, have you seen what we've had to do? The army has been put on standby to help ease pressure on petrol stations after days of long queues and pump closures. Poor sods. That's not why you joined the army, is it? <laughs> Imagine those war films from the makers of Dunkirk comes. Oi, Darren, put the nozzle down. <laughs> it gets crazier. Look what the prime minister's going to do. Boris Johnson is to personally sign off on a million morale-boosting letters <laughs> urging drivers who turned away from the industry to get back on Britain's roads. <laughs> morale-boosting letters. <laughs> Come on! You can do it! <laughs> the roads aren't the same since you left. <laughs> oh, Terry, the indicating, the pulling out, the horn honking, you were the best, Terry! <laughs> Anyway, I've got to go. There's a BBC journalist here to interview me called Massive Twat. <laughs> Bye!